Shabbat Shalom, dear friends, and to the 12 tribes of Israel. You are welcome to His word shall not pass away. My name remains Uzo Chuku. Today, we shall be talking about the deception surrounding Galatians 3.28. Neither Jew nor Greek. This is a particular verse in the Bible and chapter in the Bible which the Christian church has used to always bring false unity, false togetherness in the Christian church. Today we shall be looking into the deception and we are going to dissect we are going to dismantle every wrong doctrine associated with this particular verse of the scripture at the end of today we shall know if saint paul is the one bringing the confusion or the christian church are the ones bringing the confusion so as usual our brother Yerushalam shall give us a good insight about this topic and as usual we are going to understand at the end of the lesson if St. Paul is the one bringing the confusion or people don't really understand what St. Paul was talking about or is talking about. So without taking much of your time, we are going to pray that the most time you give us understanding on this day, the Shabbat, the day of rest which he has set aside for the house of Israel to worship him because it is a perpetual, a perpetual sign between him and the house of Israel forever forever it has no negotiation or compromise man cannot change it it remains the same forever and ever almighty and merciful father we bless your holy name we adore you because there is none like you we thank you for this opportunity you've given to us to come together to worship you on this day which you have set aside for us your people to commune with you our king and our salvation we pray that you have mercy upon us that you forgive us our sins for those times we've betrayed your love for those times we have broken your commandments we pray almighty father that you save us from this strong delusion called Christianity which our people have been soaked into and have been enslaved into that they, co they cannot reason anymore they cannot see the truth anymore but rather they believe to embrace lies Father we pray you will save us from the shackle of this enslavement that at the end you will restore your kingdom you will save us from the shackle of bondage and your name and your name alone will be glorified we pray for our leader Mazin on the canon that you continue to preserve him we pray for the restoration of Yafra that in no distance time that you will make a name for yourself we pray for those that are still under the captivity of the Islamic Republic of Nigeria that you will set them free that you will intervene and make a name for yourself in their lives and in the lives of all their friends all this we ask in the mighty name of Yahweh your son we have prayed hallelujah 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 without wasting much of our time get your writing materials as we hand over this program to brother Yara Shalom. Okay, Shalom to all the viewers, and I thank you for tuning in again for another powerful and um, a, a profound message. What we're going to touch on today is 
the topic, Galatians 3, verse 28. You're going to find out that once you find out that you're the children of Israel, that we are the true children of Israel, the descendants of the children of Israel in these last days, that once you start bringing this information out, that the backlash is going to come from the Gentiles. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to use Galatians 3, verse 28 to show that all the information, all the history that you've learned concerning your true identity, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to try to bring this verse out to show that all that's irrelevant. None of that matters anymore because it's neither Jew nor Greek. Everyone's all the same and all equal in Christ Jesus. That's how they're going to present the breakdown of Galatians 3, verse 28. So what we're going to go over in uh, today's uh, message is the correct interpretation of Galatians 3, verse 28. So no other uh, Gentiles or anyone else is going to be able to come along and try to pull this verse out to show you that who the Jews are in the last days doesn't matter and none of that's irrelevant and there's no advantage of being a Jew versus being a Gentile that's what we're going to uh, uh, clarify today so with that I'm Brother Yerushalayim this is the Bible unlocked neither Jew nor Greek deception there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So here's the exact scripture verbatim. Neither Jew nor Greek. This is the part we're going to focus on first. This is what the replacement theologists use to try to show that it doesn't matter who the children of Israel are. Or the children of Israel has been replaced with the church. So all the blessings that pertain to the children of Israel, it doesn't matter anymore because there's, it doesn't matter because there's neither Jew nor Greek. All of this pertains to the church now. So this is, what the, this is the scripture that they're going to go to. And on the surface, it's believable. They'll make you believe that this is what this is actually saying. That it doesn't matter anymore who the children of Israel are because we're all the same and on, equal, uh, on an equal playing field. And so all of that is irrelevant nationality, uh, whether you're um, a, a Jew or a Gentile, all that's irrelevant. But as you look at this verse, you can tell that that's not what that's saying. It says, neither Jew nor Greek, neither male nor female. We know that there's a difference, a clear distinction between male and female. We know there's a clear distinction between male and female. Bond, meaning someone who's enslaved, who, who's in slavery, and someone who's a free man walking around. We know that there's a clear distinction between those two. So on the surface, it's the, the, um, this scripture is not saying what people are trying to make it say. Because all you have to do is look at the context of it within the verse. But we're going to go further than that to expound on it, to show you that this verse has nothing to do with what people are trying to interpret it and trying to impose on people to make them think that this is what it's talking about. Let's get some proof. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So this is the first problem you're going to run into trying to impose that Galatians 3 verse 28 is saying that there's no distinction at all between Jew and Greek or Jew and Gentile. This is the first problem you're going to run into. And this is Paul. I'm going to use Paul to confound you. I'm going to, let, I'm going to use Paul. I'm going to use his own writings to show you that Galatians 3 28 is not talking about that there's no distinction at all between Jew and Gentile. Paul says here, that salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first. So which one is it? Is there no difference between Jew and Greek or is it to the Jew first and then to the Gentile? Romans chapter 2 verse 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil to the Jew first and also of the Gentile. To every soul that doeth evil, tribulation and anguish. He says that goes to the Jew first, and then it goes to the Gentile. So 
this is where we're going to run into a problem. When you try to teach that Galatians 3.28 is saying that there's no difference anymore. Because now you're going to have to come to the conclusion that either Paul is contradicting himself and Paul just, he's just all over the place and doesn't know what he's talking about, or maybe your interpretation is absolutely incorrect. These are the two uh, 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 options that you have. You only have two options. Either he's contradicting himself and the brother's mad and he's all over the place, or your interpretation of Galatians 3 verse 28 is all the way off. And you can't use that verse to try to push a doctrine on people saying it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Greek. It doesn't matter anymore. Paul says to the Jew first and then to the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So Paul, the same one who wrote Galatians 3.28 is saying if a person is doing good, the blessings will come to him, to the Jew first, and then to the Gentiles. Letting you know that there's a clear distinction. So we gotta have to figure out what is going on in Galatians 3 verse 28, because obviously there's something, some misunderstanding here. Somebody's not connecting the dots. Somebody's not connecting the dots uh, correctly. And we're not going anywhere. We're going to stick in Paul's writings. That's why I said, I'm going to let him confound you. To let, this is where all the madness comes in the scriptures. All the confusion comes once we get to Paul's letters. Because they're so ambiguous and they're so vague a lot of the times that they're open for many interpretations. And someone who doesn't study enough, you, it's easy to pull out one verse with Paul and, 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 and direct it and move it towards an entire doctrine. Because most people are too lazy to get the complete understanding and to do their own study. So this is where all the confusion comes in in the Bible, is in the letters of Paul. Which is why I did the trap of Paul's epistles to show you why it was set up that way. This is where all the madness comes in. So now you had to make a decision and we're going to stick with that decision too. We're going to stick with those options. Either Paul is contradicting himself or you don't understand what Galatians 3 verse 28 is saying. You only got two choices. And that's how we're going to construct all the, all the videos I do on Paul. I'm going to show you because he's always saying two different, totally different things. It sounds like he's saying one on this chapter. And then it sounds like he's saying one on another chapter. And that means, and that, that's where you run into a problem when you try to stick on one interpretation. If you have an agenda and you try to stick with it and push it on people. There's going to be other verses that seem like they contradict that. So we're going to bring it all together so we cannot make Paul a walking contradiction. Let's get some more. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now we're going to deal with the male and female portion of Galatians 3 verse 28 to let you know that this is not talking about that there's no distinction between a male and a female. It's obvious that there's a distinction between a male and a female. You don't all of a sudden just become equally on all, equal on all aspects now that you're in Christ. That's not what this is talking about. There's clear distinctions between male and female. Now this is where the egalitarians come in with the feminist objective, pushing feminism on people. They use the same verse they're using the same verse to try to show you that now all of a sudden men and women are just equal all across the board because now they believe in Christ. Now everything that a man could do, women are just as capable. Or everything that a, a, a woman can do, men are just as capable of doing. When this is not what that is saying. The homosexuals use this to prom promote homosexuality as well. Trying to say that, that now that since I believe in Christ now, I can go out and, and there's no male and female. It doesn't matter what we do because we believe in Christ. Everyone's taking Paul's letters and just creating madness over them. Everyone's doing that. They're all doing it and using it for their own agenda and objective. This has nothing to do with that. Let's get the proof that he was not saying that all people are equal. If you're a male or a female, you can now do the same exact things and it doesn't matter. Let's get the proof. 1 Timothy 2 verse 11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. 
Now he's saying, let the woman learn in silence. If there's no difference, why is he putting woman in there then? It should, it should say, let the congregation learn in silence or let men and women learn in silence. But he's targeting women in this specific verse. So obviously Galatians 3.28 was not talking about that. Or unless you want to take it at, at, at face value and say, Paul's contradicting himself then. You got two options. Either your interpretation is wrong or Paul is contradicting himself. That's the only options you get. He says, let the woman learn in silence. A woman is a female. So now we see there is a difference between male and female because he's singling it out right, right here. He's letting you know that the women have to learn in silence. That's what he's teaching. But I, but I, Paul, the same one that wrote Galatians 3 verse 28 that said neither male nor female, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, nor to take authority over the man. Meaning they don't, he doesn't allow, he doesn't subscribe to women teaching or taking an authoritative uh, position over a man in, re in regards to the congregation. That's what this is talking about. He doesn't allow that. Meaning if you were to walk into the congregation and there's a, the, the congregation full of men and women and there's a woman up there preaching, Paul says, I don't agree with that. Even though he wrote in Galatians 3 verse 28, there's neither male nor female. So something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. Either he's contradicting himself or somebody doesn't understand what Galatians 3 verse 28 is saying. So now we know for a fact that Galatians 3 verse 28 is not saying that it doesn't matter at all if you're a Jew or a Greek by nationality or if you're a male or a female because obviously he makes a distinction and he's singling out the Jews, he said the Jews first, then the Gentiles, and he said he doesn't allow women to teach men. So obviously there's some type of disconnect that we're experiencing here. So now we're gonna go back to Galatians 3.28 in the context, the proper context, and get the correct understanding of what he is saying. So we'll make him not contradict the rest of the verses that he put forth. Now that's your choice. If you want it to be a contradiction, that's, that's on you. That's on you. But we shouldn't be following anyone who's contradicting themselves, especially when it comes to the scriptures. If someone's writing in the scriptures as, uh, uh, on the behalf of the Most High, we shouldn't be following someone who's doing that. So if you believe he's contradicting himself, you need to get away from Paul altogether. But we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, and we're going to piece it together so he doesn't contradict himself. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ There is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus You are all one all you're, you're one what once you get baptized into Christ, you're going to find out that it's talking about all one body in Christ. That's what Paul is referring to in the scripture. It's not talking about everyone is just all equal on the same level. It's saying that you're part of one body. That's what this is referring to. And this is not talking about the Christ of Christianity. If you're baptized into that Christ, you're not, we're not part of the same body. We're not part of the same body. Being baptized into Christ means putting off the old man, the same old man that told you that it was okay to eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, that told you that it was okay to uh, uh, um, uh, commit fornication and be involved in bestiality and have sex with your parents and break the Sabbath day and do Sunday worship. The old man that told you to do that, then you put on the spirit of Christ which told you not to do those things. That's the being baptized into Christ. It's talking about being baptized and brought into one body. Let's get the proof on that. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Into one body. This is, the same, this is going to be the same exact thing he's talking about in Galatians 3, verse 28. Once you get baptized, you're baptized into one body. But let, we're going to find out about this body. If everyone's equal, 
and on the same level or if there's different levels to this body. That's what we're gonna find out. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether you be Jews or Greek, there's neither Jew nor Greek to be able to get baptized into this one body. Whether we be bond or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit. This is what it's talking about in Galatians 3 verse 28. Whether you're Jew or Greek, you're baptized into one body. That's what it's talking about. Now, let's get the understanding and find out if this body is all equal. If there's equal parts to this body or if there's different places and positions in this body for Jews and Greeks. For the body is not one member, but many. There's many parts of the body. Same way you have many parts of your body. You have a head, shoulders, knees, and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose, same exact thing. There's many parts to the body. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. So there we have the foot of the body, which is those that are gonna be on the lower level of the body, still part of the same one body, still one in Christ, but you have people that are gonna be the foot of the body. You have people that are gonna be the hands of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? It's still part of the body though. It's still one with the body, whether your position is a low position or a high position. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Then you have the ears of the body and you have the eyes of the body. Two different body parts, but still part of the body, part of the one body. That's what it's talking about in Galatians 3 verse 28. You're all one body with different positions. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body was an eye, or if everyone was all equal in the body, and had the same exact position in the body, where's room for the rest of the things that need to be done in the body? If, if all the body all it just, does, just does is here, where your eyes come into play? Same thing with anything that you see in life. If you have a job full of nothing but managers, when's the, where's the job gonna get done? Who's gonna do the rest of the job? You have a whole staff full of managers, all on the same level. You're not gonna accomplish anything. That's why they have a hierarchy and a rank structure with things like in the military, everyone is, is all one organization, like in the Marine Corps, it's all one organization, but there's different levels. You have privates all the way in between, all the way to up to, to the general. But it's still one organization. You all, everyone can't be on the same level. If the whole were hearing, then where the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. God is the one who set the members in the body. He's the one who said who was going to be the head of the body and who's going to be the tail of the body. The Most High is the one that set that. Not Paul, not Brother Yerushalayim, not the Christian pastor. The Most High is the one who uh, uh, set that up. Now let's go find the account where the Most High set it up. And let's find out what he has to say about who's the one running the show in the body, or if everyone's all equal. Deuteronomy 28, verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head. The Lord, the Most High, shall make thee. The thee is talking about the children of Israel. He shall make the children of Israel the head of the body, and not the tail. And not the tail, because the Gentiles are going to be the tail of the body. And we can go on through plenty of scriptures to show this, all throughout the prophecies. The Israelites are gonna be the head, not the tail. We're the tail right now in, um, in, in society, but not in the kingdom to come. When the Most High sets up the kingdom in the body, uh, a structural body under Christ, the Israelites are gonna be the head of that body. The governing structure, the governing ruling class of the kingdom of heaven and everyone else is gonna fall into place. It's not gonna be an equal uh, society in the kingdom of heaven. And we can go into those scriptures. We definitely can go into them to, to prove it, to back it all up. 
Because you can't back up a, a, a kingdom of heaven in the scriptures where everyone's just all equal. You can't back that up in the scriptures. You can try to take Galatians 3 verse 28 and try to, and, and try to uh, um, uh, mold it to make it say that. But there's no other scriptures that's going to back that up. Not anywhere in the prophecies. Israel is going to be the ruling class in the body. And thou shalt be above only. The children of Israel shall be above only. When it says above only, there's no room for being equal. You shall be above only. We're not fulfilling that right now because we didn't keep the commandments. But the remnant will return and keep the commandments and we will fulfill this prophecy. This is a prophecy here that the Most High is putting in place that will be fulfilled. And thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God. And we shall not be beneath, like we are today in today's society. We're not going to be beneath if, the Most High says if, 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 it's a stipulation. The Most High always deals with stipulations. If we come back and keep the commandments. Another reason why the Gentiles teach the commandments are done away with. They push that on us, that the, the commandments are done away with. Because this is a prophecy still up for grabs. The prophecy already says that a remnant of Israel is going to return. Only a rem remnant, only a small amount is going to come back in these last days and keep these commandments. To the best of their ability and follow Christ. You need both of them. You got to follow Christ and believe on Christ and keep the commandments. You can't separate the two. So once we come back, a remnant will come back as prophesied. There, that remnant is going to be the head. Above only. And it's not going to be shared with anyone. The head is going to be the nation of Israel. They're trying to keep you out of these commandments so the Gentiles can remain on top. And, and, and can remain in authority over the scriptures and keep you in sin, eating pork, shrimp, and uh, lobster, eating all the unclean meats, hating your own brother, gang banging, promoting this stuff on TV, like this is how we're supposed to be acting. And then you don't think there's anything wrong with it because guess what? The churches teach the laws are done away with. So it's okay to be a gang banger and to be a thug out there on the streets and eat pork and to sleep with other men's wives and to do all type of heinous acts and to go out and rob people and think it's cool to do that. You bought the lie. We all bought the lie. But now it's time to snap out of it. If we come back and keep these commandments, the Most High is putting us on the top. Only. Now let's find out why he's going to put us on the top. He explains that too. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. For thou, referring to the children of Israel, are a holy people unto the Lord our God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He chose the nation of Israel to be a special people unto himself. He's the one who made that, that, that decision. Not Brother Yerushalayim, not Christ, not Paul. The Most High made that decision himself. Just like we choose something to be special unto ourselves, we might like a pair of shoes that might be special to ourselves, or we might like a cousin that's special to ourselves. The Most High says he chose the nation of Israel to be a special people unto himself because he's the most high and he can make that choice. Above all people know the same. Above all people know equal to. Above all people, neither Jew nor Greek. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's what the most high said. That's his pick. That's his fantasy five and his dream team. That's who he chose. So Paul, being a mortal man, can't 2,000 years after um, uh, Moses wrote this down, can't come and come change it and say, you know what, I know the Most High said above all people, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to scribble that out and say uh, we're all equal. Paul couldn't do that. He knew that. And no one else can come along and say, say anything different. 
when Paul wrote in Galatians 3.28, it didn't say, thus saith the Lord, everyone is now all equal. Paul was breaking down a scenario as being one in the body of Christ. That's all he was saying. Let's get some more from Paul to summarize it all up. Romans chapter 3 verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Because according to the Gentiles, their interpretation that they try to impose on people of Galatians 3 verse 28, according to them, there's no advantage. Because everyone's all equal, we're all in the same boat. There's no Jew nor Greek, male or female. There's no distinction in any way for uh, any fashion, uh, a shape, fashion, or form. What advantage is there of being an Israelite? Or what profit is there of circumcision? And what profit is there of being a circumcised Israelite? That's keeping the commandments and following Christ. This is what he's talking about. Much every way, much every way, much every way, contrary to what the Gentiles try to impose on you with their interpretation of Galatians 3 verse 28. Paul, the same person who wrote Galatians 3 verse 28, is telling you that there's an advantage of being an Israelite. He's letting you know that there's a clear advantage of being an Israelite and keeping the commandments in the spirit of Christ. Paul is not contradicting himself. And now he's about to tell you the reason why there's an advantage. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Because the Most High came down and gave his oracles to the children of Israel. He didn't come down and give them to all nations. They weren't there in the wilderness and on Mount Sinai when the Most High delivered them to Moses. All nations weren't a part of that. That's why Paul says to the Jew first and then it's to the, uh, the Greek. Obviously there's a difference between being an Israelite and a Gentile. When you read in Revelations, the seventh chapter, you read about the, the 12,000 being sealed from the tribes of the children of Israel. 12,000 being sealed. If there is no difference, it should say 12,000 from every tribe of everyone out there in the world. That's what it should say. But that's not what it says. It says 12,000 from each tribe of the children of Israel. Those are the seal, the ones that are sealed to be the next rulers of the kingdom of heaven. When you read in Revelation 21, it tells you that John saw the kingdom of heaven and he saw the 12 gates and written on the 12 gates were the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There was no difference between Jew and Gentile. It wouldn't have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. It had the names of the 12 tribes or the thousand tribes of the Gentiles, including the nation of Israel. But that's not what it has. Letting you know that this kingdom to come is an Israelite kingdom, ruled and governed by Israelites. The Gentiles will have their part in the kingdom, absolutely. Because as the body, you need all functions of it to operate. You need all functions of the body to operate. They will be part of the body. That's not, what, that's not what's being brought out, that they're not going to be part of the body. They will be part of the body. Those that repent, not the ones that are in the Christian. If you're in the modern day Christian church right now, you can forget about it. You're the one walking around teaching Galatians 3.28 means it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or who the Israelites are today, you can forget about it. That's not talking about you. But the, the, the Gentiles that repent and do away with all the paganism and stop trying to boast against the natural branches, they'll be part of the kingdom. They'll be part of the kingdom. But it's an Israelite kingdom. Wow. We are well. Okay, shalom to all the viewers. And I thank you. Studio, and uh, we've listened to the scriptures. We have seen that the verse of Galatians 3.28 is not what people are making it to be. It's not what the Christian church are making it to be that it is. Because at the end of the day, we end up using the scripture wrongly 
to promote wrong things to the extent that even those practicing homosexuality are even holding on to the sacred ways of the Most High by twisting it the other way around in order to promote and justify their evil act. And this is one of the reasons why our leader Mazinam Bekanu said it severally that we should stop attending Yoruba Pentecostal churches. For me, not just Yoruba Pentecostal churches, but every denomination, be it Pentecostal or not, we don't need to associate ourselves with them. Because the more we associate ourselves with them, the more they help us to break the laws, the more they help us to offend the Most High, the more our slavery continues, the more brainwashing of our people. So we actually really need to separate ourselves from these people. We are not the same people. We are different from them in all ramification. Because when we continue living our lives as if we are the same people with these people, then we will always remain their slaves. And that is why our women have been married away to Yorubas and to Aosas. Today you see an Aosa man that, that is a Muslim becoming a Christian, opening a church, and our people running into there, being brainwashed. The same thing with the Pentecostal founders in Nigeria. There is no Pentecostal pastor you founder of a particular denomination that is not with a Muslim background. They all have Muslim background. And what are you doing with such people? You cannot see that they are the same people only just to enslave us. May the Most High have mercy upon us. May He give us understanding. And with this, we've come to the end of today's Shabbat program. Hope to see you some other time. My name remains Uzochuku. Bye for now.